This is the Online Learning Podcast. Welcome to episode 14. Are you making the most of the person you can be? Online learning is your gateway to expanding your horizons in a direction you may not even have thought of. Hello, I'm John Colley. Here on the Online Learning Podcast, we challenge you to find the online learning courses to take you to your next level. Expert in something? Why not create your own course and monetize that expertise? Come on, open this door with me and step inside the Online Learning Podcast. Hello, I'm John Colley and welcome to this edition of the Online Learning Podcast. Today I've got a slightly different uh, show for you today because instead of an interview, I want to uh, take you through the 10 things I think you need to consider when choosing your Udemy topic. So it's a special uh, section today from me to help Udemy course creators when they're first thinking about setting up their first course, either on Udemy or online. But first of all, let's give a shout out to a couple of people who have given the show five star ratings on iTunes. The first five star review comes from Stumpy2 on iTunes in the UK. Stumpy says, looks like another winner. This is useful stuff. John Colley is a very original thinker and really knows how to get ideas across. Flattery will get you everywhere, Stumpy, but thank you very much indeed for the kind words and, of course, for the five-star rating. The second one comes from uh, Ideas Uploaded, which is from Tara Roskell, who's one of my interviewees. Full disclosure there. She says, great for learners and teachers. She says, this is a great podcast whether you are looking to learn or teach something new. As a tutor, I can learn marketing tips for my course, and as a student, I can listen to interviews with teachers whose courses I'm considering taking, with the added bonus that they give a discount to their course. And she also goes on to say, in the interest of honesty, I am a tutor who has been interviewed on this podcast. So, Tara, thank you very much indeed for those kind words and for the very valuable five-star rating. If you give us a five-star rating and leave us a comment, it could be your name that I shout out here. So why not go over to iTunes now and spend the one minute you need to do that and then send me an email, john at jbdcolly.com. Let me know who you are, which country you're in, so I can, can get the, uh, the iTunes store and see it for myself. And, uh, you know, I will then, then give you a shout-out for a comment and a five-star rating. So... Let's get on with the show now and let's take a look at this week's marketing tip of the week. And now the online learning podcast marketing tip of the week. This week's marketing tip comes from Phil Ebener, who I interviewed in episode five. And he says that a technique that he's found success with in in terms of marketing is that he um, picks out um, a number of courses that uh, he made a while back. Um, and don't at the moment get as much love as they used to. He says he then did a flashback Friday deal, complete with a retro-themed course announcement. He started the deal, he said, when he, when he sent me this email last Friday, I sold my original three courses that I made in 2012 for $19 each. And this technique sold 25 courses, which garnered him a profit of just over $400, excluding the Udemy fee, which he thought was a pretty good for, for a week's work and for selling courses that hadn't been popular since early 2013. So if you have got a number of courses up there and one of them hasn't been marketed around uh, for a little bit, maybe this is a technique to, um, to inject a little bit more uh, love and a little bit more monetization into that course. So Flashback Friday. Phil, thank you very much indeed for your great marketing tip. In today's episode, in lieu of an interview, I would like to give you my 10 top tips for topic selection when you're considering uh, what sort of topic you might choose for your course. Now, the framework for this I have borrowed unashamedly from Josh Kaufman, who's written an excellent book called The Personal MBA. In that, he's got a brief section in which he sets out the 10 points you need to consider when evaluating a market. 
So I thought, well, instructors are as much entrepreneurs as anyone else, so I thought it'd be interesting to consider his criteria in the context of creating an online learning course to see what, this, you know, what insights we can actually draw from this. Now, the first of the, uh, the ten points is urgency. So the, you need to consider how urgently do your students need the knowledge you are about to provide them with. This isn't a question I'm, I can answer. That's really down to you. But you need to consider whether your course is um, you know, going to be a real value for your students and therefore they're going to, to really have a, a burning need for it. And it doesn't matter whether your course is in business or it's a lifestyle or it's technology. The important point here is to identify pain points and real problems. And if you can offer the convenience of a ready package solution and the wisdom and knowledge to solve the problem, then students will purchase your course. The question you have to ask is, what is the problem I am solving? I started drafting a social media boot camp course and I decided it's too vague and too broad a subject and it doesn't actually solve a specific need. So at the moment, that's very much on the back burner. A course focusing on LinkedIn or Facebook could solve the problem of how to use these platforms and that might be a real issue for somebody. But just a general course on the world of social media, while possibly interesting, I don't think is touching enough of a pain point to make it a good seller. The second point to consider is market size. Now, in the case of an online course, you need to consider how many students are taking courses similar to the one you're proposing to write. You can address a large market, but equally um, you can add great value if you address a niche market. And if you choose the latter, a niche market, you need to make sure that it's still large enough to be worthwhile. On the other hand, if you do go for a niche market and you're relatively early to it, you have the opportunity to dominate that niche, particularly while this whole online learning um, world, this whole you know, um, universe is relatively immature. If you choose instead to go for a large market, then you need to make sure that your course is sufficiently differentiated from your competition so that it becomes the first choice for potential students. Don't forget that if there are a lot of courses out there and there are a lot of students attending them, at least that's proof that there's a market out there for your course. All you then need to do is make your course distinct. The third area to consider is pricing potential. Now, what is the highest price students are prepared to pay for a course such as the one you're proposing to write? Pricing your course online, and particularly on Udemy, is a very complex subject. You need to look at how your competitors are pricing their courses, and you also need to bear in mind that um, platforms such as Udemy will offer promotions and discounts on your course. However you look at it, you've got to put a lot of work into your course and you deserve to get a return on your investment. So you need to think how you're going to use the coupon tool as a weapon in your armory to get new students. And if you're going to have to discount your course, then you're going to have to price it in the first place high enough to enable you to do this so that you still have enough headroom to make a good return on your course, even if you have to offer it at a discount. The fourth point is all about the cost of customer acquisition. Ask yourself how easy it is to sell your course. How much time and effort are you going to have to put in to sell it? When it comes to selling on a platform like Udemy, you do need to develop a very proactive approach. And it's not sufficient to simply rely on their marketing to sell your course for you. Is there the best way to do this? Well, I'm sorry, there's no simple answer. As you've seen from this podcast alone, every week I give a different marketing tip, a different idea to stimulate you to find another way to sell your course. Your ability to market online will, of course, depend on the, the extent of your online presence as well as your potential audience. Now, Udemy has got a great blog where you can get lots of information, but also if you join the Facebook groups they provide, you can learn a lot from other instructors as well. The fifth point I want to talk about is the cost of value and delivery. Once written and submitted online to Udemy, for example, your cost of delivery is practically zero. 
And this is one of the great advantages of creating a course and benefiting from the scale of any online platform. Essentially, you are making your um, own advising business, your own teaching business, whatever it is you're, you're doing, you're making it scalable because once you've created the course and people access it online, um, you know, there's no further work for you to do. You just need to sit back and respond to their questions and then perhaps occasionally update your course from time to time. The sixth point is about uniqueness of the, your offer. And I ask the question again, how unique is your course going to be? How differentiated, how distinct is it going to be compared to those who are, that are already online? You, you will need to identify your competitors in, in scoping out um, you know, the, the, the market you're competing against in order to see how they've put their course together. You need to look at things like their content, their structure, the types of media they're using, the style that they're taking in their lectures, so listen to one or two of their free lectures, and the lengths of each of their, their, their courses, both their modules and the individual lectures themselves. I think it's a very good idea to take um, free courses from other instructors to learn how they're teaching and help you to involve your own style. Listen and, and, and take note of how they present their, con their content and what good ideas can you learn from them and indeed, what would you do better? Now, I'm not encouraging you here to copy them, but I am strongly encouraging you to develop a unique approach of your own, but try and take the best of everything you see around you. Let's look now at speed to market, which is point number seven. How quickly can you create a course? Well, the first course you create will probably take a long time to put together, possibly several months, but don't be put off by this. Once you have done the process once, you'll find it's a lot easier to master it. You'll understand the technology better. You'll understand the platform you're putting it up onto better. You'll know how to write your courses and, and how to create them much more effectively. Um, I have written um, elsewhere on my blog about the process of creating a course, um, but that's a subject perhaps for another day. Point number eight is all about upfront investment. And I need, you need to consider how much you're going to have to spend to make your course. And I caution you here not to rush in. It is perfectly possible to make the course inexpensively. Uh, Udemy certainly provides you with lots of tips about the equipment you can use and um, the, the way to make the course. And I strongly advise you to, to, to look at their resources before you go and spend any money. But essentially, you know, you need to have a good quality microphone. That's obviously important. You need to have the recording and processing software. You'll probably need a computer of some kind. You may well need a camera of some kind. But again, you can look at the Facebook groups, and they give a lot of advice um, about uh, equipment. And if in doubt, go on to the Udemy studio and ask the question, you know, what, what mic would people recommend, what camera would people recommend, that sort of thing. I do think it's important, though, that you have a USB microphone uh, because that seems to pick up the best quality of sound. But the one I work with costs me about £40, so it doesn't have to cost a fortune. The other point you need to consider is the investment you're going to make in time, because time is money, and you need to factor that in to the amount of time you're prepared to commit to, committing to creating your course. Point number nine I want to bring to your attention is all about upsell opportunities. Once you've got a course up there and you've got a body of students, can you make further sales to those students? Because once you've created that audience, you can create similar courses in, in different areas and then sell them. Um, Hitesh Chowdhury does this very successfully. He's got his, his light courses, which are his um, initial programming courses, but then he also has the full versions, which he then sells. And people come in there hundreds and thousands for his light courses, but a lot of them then buy the, the paid, the premium course to get the full content. The final point, point number 10, is the evergreen potential. When you're building your course, uh, you need to really try to do it in such a way that you are not um, tying yourself to any dates in the present time because this will enable the course to effectively be evergreen. Now, it doesn't 
automatically mean that you don't ever have to update it because there may be changes in the course material. You may want to add further material to it. But you don't want to give it any reason when you're creating it for it to become out of date because of something you've said or done in the course. So if you create a course about a software solution, you may have to update it because the software updates. But, um, you know, you perhaps can do that as an add-on course or you can just put it as bonus material on your existing course. The final thought I would leave you with is a very simple one. The more carefully you prepare before you start to create your course, the better positioned you will be to create a successful and profitable course. These 10 points were all based on a blog post I wrote a couple of months ago, and I'll make sure I put a link in the show notes so you can go back to the original uh, blog post in case you want to get the, uh, the detailed content and have it in writing. And the show notes will be at jbdcolleague.com forward slash OLP014 for episode 14. So now it's time for this week's free course recommendation of the week. Let's take a look at this week's free course of the week. Given the theme of the little segment I've just completed for you, there's only one real course that I can recommend which will continue to help uh, new course creators. And um, this is the Udemy course created by the team at Udemy, uh, headed by Alex Moses, called How to Create a Udemy Course. Now, whether you're putting the course on Udemy or on any other platform, this is a fabulous uh, walkthrough of all the basic things you need to do if you're going to create an online course. It's the best single resource that I can think of recommending to you all in one place. It's been taken by over 24,000 people, so they must be doing something right. And it takes you through um, the the various steps you need to take in a very logical fashion to create a course. It's got 29 lectures, three hours of content, some great resources, um, and it's an absolute no-brainer for a anybody considering uh, online instruction. So this is How to Create a Udemy Course by the team at Udemy, uh, headed by Alex Moses, And I think you'll find it absolutely invaluable. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found this particularly helpful. It has been concentrated quite a lot on the benefits for course creators. But I make no apology for that because I think there's so much complexity out there. Uh, Anything I can do to help new course creators to get their courses online, I think is a really important part of the remit of this podcast. If you've got any comments or you want to to ask me any questions, you can email me, john at jbdcolly.com. And please don't forget to go into iTunes and leave us a rating and a recommendation, uh, a comment, which will certainly help to promote uh, the, uh, the, the podcast Podcast and and keep it coming up in the rankings and i've got a special offer for you now in the outro so until the next episode thank you very much for your time it's been great to spend it with you so that's it for another episode of the online learning podcast i really appreciate you being with me if you enjoyed the show i would really appreciate it if you would go over to itunes and leave me a rating preferably a five star rating if you think it's worth it and a comment and then if you email me john at jbdcolly.com that's Julia Brava delta collie.com i will send you a free coupon code to my udemy course an introduction to startups which has got 40 minutes of video teaching you all about startups so thank you very much for spending time with me today and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode this has been the online learning podcast <laughs>